G'day guys, I'm uh, gonna do a just a water run on my single tier three vessel system. And I'll just give you a quick look at it. It's a uh, dedicated Herm system. We've got two pumps running, two little brown pumps running on STC 1000s one for the hot liquor tank and one for the Herms you can see my uh, plate stirrer in the background there and uh, I also have started filtering my water through carbon filters to get rid of the chlorine or the chloramine and uh, I'm boiling my water at the moment because my water from the mains is not very good at all. Okay, so at the moment I'm uh, just recirculating, recirculating my water through the center kettle here, which is my uh, going to be my strike water, and it's going through one of the manifolds here and just basically back straight into the top. I've got a little plastic clip at the top here that holds my hose in. Got it from the dollar store. Works really well. Uh, there's about 35 litres in the boiler. Should take about 45 minutes to heat up. I'm on 100 volt. Uh, I'm using uh, 3000 watt elements. This one here is the Steel Dragon. Uh, element guard kit it's a fantastic little bit of gear uh, as long as you can weld a tri clamp fitting to your kettle this will just clamp straight on and uh, they're really easy to put together um, this is actually the boiler for my distillation setup of the steel dragon dash 2 bubble cap still um, I've put some legs on it I'm gonna put a drain on it eventually when I uh, get the balls to do it Got a one inch or half inch uh, ball valve coming out the steel dragon element guard kit I have a thermo well going into here Actually, I need to put that thermometer in there. Just in case of sliding it in there. That goes to the STC 1000. So, uh, my reason for recirculating, I'm just trying to keep that water flowing around the element. Uh, it does seem to make it heat up a little bit faster. Um, Alright, we'll, we'll start with the... Uh, dedicated home system now uh, I'd like to thank uh, Nev from Aussie Home Brewer of griffinbrewing.com for the Herms coil uh, he's, he's come up with this design and makes it very easy to uh, heat up or get really fast ramp times I've got a 3000 watt element in the bottom. I've got another Steel Dragon element guard kit at the bottom. 2 into 4 inch reducer into a 500 mil uh, Steel Dragon length of uh, tri clamp pipe, stainless, and uh, I've got this end cap from Steel Dragon. Uh, I've modified it. Uh, I've got two, three holes in here. And I've got these uh, stainless nipples and all the fittings from Griffin Brewing. And I've also got a little vent hole in the top here. Eventually I'll, I'll set up a... put a nipple in there so I can uh, at least have it venting into 
some sort of reservoir. Uh, this section here, I've got a thermo thermo well here with the other SDC 1000 fitting going into it. Uh, the temp gauge or sensor, um, and this is uh, basically how I my home system works. I'll show you a quick shot of the manifold system here. Got two little brown pumps. They were twenty bucks each. A few fittings. Uh, a little bit on the manifold system. Okay, so I've got a direct line from the pump, uh, so I can uh, throttle the pump if I need to. Uh, this valve here is just a bleed line, and you can see I've got it running here, a little short pipe. This goes, it's just going into a jar at the moment, uh, like a little drain for everything. These are 12 volt pumps. I've just wired them up basically at the moment. I uh, don't have switches for them. So, with the pumps, I'm just running a power board here at the moment. Pump number two is running. Green light, and uh, you just switch it on with the power board. Makes it really easy. Um, and here you can see the hot liquor tank, 32.5. Okay, you can see it's going up a degree every couple of seconds, point, point 0.1 of a degree every couple of seconds, which is kind of nice. It should take about 40 minutes. Now, the mash time comes out of the Herms coil. I'll just insulate a little bit with some stuff I had lying around. I'll probably get some nice stuff that fits later on so I don't need all this tape on it. Quick disconnect. A couple of fittings. And I've set the sparge arm and uh, recirculation arm so it's adjustable. Just a bit of threaded rod. We've got uh, wing nuts on here. So I can adjust the sparge and recirc line. So it just sits on top of the grain bed. Uh, inside, I just made up a copper manifold with a lot of slits in the bottom. Uh, it's partly soldered together, so I can pull it apart and clean it. Uh, there's a half inch uh, coupler on the back side of the half inch ball valve there. I've just got a small bit of silicon hose that slots into that half inch line and just locks it all in place. This works really well. Uh, the boil kettle. I've got a hillbilly stills element going to a two inch tri-clamp fitting with a half inch uh, ball valve coming out there as well and uh, I'll just see, take a shot of inside the boil kettle at the element and a, uh, you can see a little uh, mesh screen in there I've set it up so that uh, I can Uh, drain off the wart without collecting too much trub. Okay, I'll uh, actually one thing I'll show you here with the Steel Dragon Herms, uh, the head dedicated Herms system. I've designed it so that I can actually drain the heating water out of the Herm system after I've completed a run. 
Uh, you can see here there's a bolt in between the two in between the two uh, brackets which I got from Steel Dragon as well, four inch brackets. This hand score holds two and a half liters measured. Now I've just set it up on a on a uh, you'll see here I can actually tilt the Herms coil so I can drain it out after a run. It goes the whole way around. I don't want to turn it any further as uh, it's actually full at the moment. So, yeah, I've set it up on a rotating system so I can empty the water out of it. Works really well, actually. It doesn't need any mounting bolts or anything or like holding bolts, it just sits there. No problems. Um, the little brown pumps. I'll give you a quick look at the flow rate of them. It's a small pump, but actually very, very effective. I'm very happy with them for twenty dollars. They're food safe. Uh, they, I think, are up to one hundred and fifty degrees Celsius. Took a little bit of getting the manifold together, just designing it so it worked in a nice sort of ergonomic way. Obviously, everything will be uh, version three eventually, but for now, I'm really happy with the way it's set up. I've just got a chopping board. Everything was mounted on a chopping board. I've got these two bolts, one here and one on the other side, that I can just slot the slot the chopping board onto my stainless IKEA table. Uh, everything's electric. I really wanted to steer clear of the gas. And actually, no, it's all designed so that there's no spillage in the room as well. Uh, due to the fact I'm relatively far inside the house. So incorporating the uh, boiler for the still in the center. I've just got one other keg and a 50 litre igloo cooler. Uh, it's taken me a while to get it all together. I've been relatively busy but um, everything's coming together quite well now. It's amazing what you can do with a couple of hours a day. I've got these two STC 1000s set up. Uh, and at the moment because of the I'm using stainless steel for my herm system it's holding within a degree um, I do have a POD controller in the process, but as you can tell, my ele electrical knowledge is relatively low, and uh, I ordered the wrong SSR, so I need to get back to the drawing board with that one. I've ordered the parts from Mormon, and uh, they've actually been posted. I'll get back once the strike water's up to, I think, 50, 56.4. I'll get back then, and we can uh, have a look how we start to mash in or dough in. All right, amazingly, it's been about 10 minutes. I'm just about at strike temp there. So recirculating the water has definitely made my uh, strike temp rate a lot quicker. Um, I'm going to be brewing a house amber ale, which I've just built on uh, Beersmith. Um, although this is definitely for beer 
it'll also be for making whiskey. Uh, I've got it there. So basically, uh, protein rest at 56.4 for 30 minutes. So I'll just try and uh, go through the whole process without going through the 30 minute, 45 minute sacrification and mash out temp and see how the whole system works. Alright, I'm at 56.6. The SDC is actually set at 56.4. Okay, now it's a cool, so it's been off. Got to 56.8. So it'll probably go up to 56.9. There you go. 57. So it's gone up 0.6 of a degree. Just to show you that it's how it's holding temp, I'll show you. It'll drop back down to 56.9. At its own time. Okay, clearly it's not going to go up any further than 57.0. So I'll switch the lines. And fill the mash all right for my volumes because uh, I don't have sight glasses I'm just using a 600 mil rule and I've uh, done some measurements on what that measures as far as uh, the volume goes in each kettle and I'll uh, calculate that as to what I need in the mash tun now my recipe calls for 16.01 litres of water at 56.4 so I'll just do that calculation and then transfer the water alright I've transferred the water to the mash tun uh, you can see uh, the Herms system slowly ramping up there I'm now uh, recirculating and you can see here into my mash tun the adjustable uh, adjustable spar jam. I've just got some wing nuts here, so I can uh, adjust the where that needs to be uh, during a actual uh, brew making day. I will uh, adjust this spar jam so that it sits just above or just sitting on the top of the grain bed. Uh, for now, you can see I've drill the holes to direct the water flow to the outside of the esky so uh, basically everything there's no um, no channeling in the grain bed um, yeah so uh, it's now recirculating through the dedicated herm system uh, the ramp times uh, because I'm running a running a 3000 watt element this this is actually very hot. Uh, you don't want to touch it for too long. I can touch it just for a second, but that's the water's pretty well boiling. Uh, you can see here on the uh, ramp time, it's going up relatively quick, which is what we want. We want to see these ramp times within couple of minutes three to five minutes and uh, you know we're not we're not spending half a day brewing so very important part of the dedicated herm system uh, that I get this up to temp so uh, at the moment I think 56.4 is my uh, ramp time uh, sorry my first sacrification rest 
And you can see here the SCC 1000 will switch off. Right, so the heat's off. You can hear my boil kettle still working. The cooling lights on. I've set these uh, SCC 1000s uh, with a cooling control as well, so I can use them to ferment or whatever. So 57, 57.1, 57 so that's 0 0.7 of a degree over my actual mash temp required temperature. I thought it would be kind of interesting for everyone to see that. Uh, if it goes, well there you go, if it didn't, if it went over 0.6 of a degree I'd be surprised. Um, the stainless steel uh, vessel here is holding temp and it, it really doesn't fluctuate that much. So it'll take longer to go down than will it will to go up really. 56.8 So I'm sort of gambling on uh, within a degree of actually uh, required temperature you can see here I'm still recirculating okay so what I can do here is I'll uh, hypothetically, I will switch off my pump. Actually, I'll switch off the temp first. Switch the temp off. Okay, switch off the pump. Alright. Let that drain out. Okay, I would uh, disconnect this hose. Mo remove the lid. Doing my uh, doing my uh, grain that uh, suits for the recipe, and then I would uh, restart my pump, restart my SCC one thousand, and then set my clock for half an hour, which is the 30 minute protein rest uh, mix in the grains make sure there's no dough balls and then uh, I would wait 30 minutes and then I would ramp to 66.7 degrees over 15 minutes so let's have a look here I'll just uh, set this and I'll Okay, I've just uh, reset the STC 1000, give you an idea of ramp time. Uh, you can hear the second that I set the temperature controller, this is starting to boil. You can't hear the pumps, the pumps are almost silent. You can kind of hear the boiling going on inside the Hermes system. So let's have a look here, 66.7 I think, 66.7, this will give you an idea of the ramp times with the dedicated Herm system, really isn't long at all, a couple of minutes. As if that isn't boring enough. You can see I've broke my leg recently. Here's my snowboard setup. Got all my gear in there. It can't be used, obviously. Half cripple. Um, okay, over here. You can see this is Frank's whiskey recipe. It's at 67%. And this is good. It is getting really good. 
see the date there. Uh, so it's seven months old or whatever. I'm not really good, too good at maths, but uh, you water that down a fair bit, and you get uh, pure bliss. I'd imagine this in like three or four years to be superb. Okay, so the boil, the boil kettle, uh, sorry, the my sparge water is 76.6 degrees. And I've got another 6 degrees to go at home. So my ramp time is just really, really quick. Basically, I'm still recirculating here. I'll just adjust this. So, I'm going to show you how well this actually works. Just the guesstimate. Spin out these. Let's have a look where they are. There you go. Almost spot on. That's what you want. Set those so that it doesn't budge so you know where you are. You can hear the you can hear the pump running. There's no leaks in the system. I'm using these little quick quick tie uh Worm drive things at the moment. They're uh, from the dollar store as well. Until I get everything A1, I won't be uh, stuffing around with unscrewing everything with a screwdriver. Um, everything will have quick disconnects eventually. I've got a fair few on order at the moment, so everything should be uh, just all quick disconnect either end. 63.2. Now, I, the video on this section has been going for four minutes. So, you're probably looking at uh, maybe six minutes to get to the next step. Alright, so uh, the next step here, obviously, I'll be sacrificing for 45 minutes. And then mashing out for 10 minutes. So mash out. I'll uh, get this up to 75.6. Should take another 6 minutes. Near enough. And then uh, I'll start sparging. So yeah, so far for a relatively minimal cost. I've got myself a really nice little system here. Uh, hopefully this gives everybody a little bit of a uh, kick in the butt to give their own home system a go. Alright, I've just set my uh, dedicated Herms heater to 76.5. You can hear it starting to boil there. Just to give everyone an idea of the uh, ramp time I'm getting here. This is the mash out temp, 76.5. Hypothetically, if I was to be running a grain or running a beer or mash, this is how long it would take to uh, get to that ramp temperature, mash out. Okay, that's one minute. Everyone's clearly watching their time on the YouTube. Uh, I always make a pretty long video because uh, I like to explain a fair bit so everyone gets a good idea of how things work. Okay. I'd like to thank uh, Lloyd and Nev for their 
information and equipment. Uh, it took me a while to work out how to wire one of these STC 1000s as I, I'm not an electrician's arsehole. But uh, I got some really good information from Prairie Piss. Uh, he's got an excellent PDF, colour PDF that shows you how to wire one of these and uh, I managed to do it quite easily. Okay, so uh, you can see what's going on. Obviously I'm still circulating. In the mesh there's quite a bit of steam coming out so this ASCII holds in the heat really well. I do have a hole or two in here from previous uh, experiments but I think you need that anyway uh, just to help vent a little bit of the pressure otherwise I think you get a fair bit of pressure build up in there. Um, at the moment the hot liquor tank is still boiling or boiling, should I say, at 75.8 uh, and that's going to be used for sparge so you can see there my hands are actually the water entering the mash tun 70.8, the boil, hot liquor tank's just turned off Yeah, I mean these ramp times are really impressive. So uh, this recipe actually asks you to do that ramp time over 15 minutes. So I'd probably set it at somewhere in between that and mash out. And uh, there you go. The hot liquor tank is starting to boil again. It's a little bit noisier than the herms. So we're looking at about 5 minutes of the ramp time of about 10 degrees. Very efficient. And very easy to put together actually. You can see my swivel set up there. It's just a three quarter inch bolt with a lock nut on the back. The two steel dragon brackets uh, set in place with short uh, stainless screws. Works really well, nicely clamped together. There you go, the uh, hot liquor tank's been switched off again. You can hear it. Okay. Won't be long now. There you go. 75.6. 5 minutes and 26 seconds. Working really well. Okay, so uh, now it's in cooling mode. The STC 1000. I'll turn this off and uh, I'll start sparging. Hypothetically. Okay guys, now we're sparging. I've got the sparge water running through my Herms coil and the actual hot liquor tanks at 75.6. So you can see I'm just slowly dripping the sparge through. And I'm slowly filling up the boil kettle as you should. Nice and slow sparge. You can hear the pumps. They're running a fair bit slower. You can hear the 
elements kicking in when necessary. All right, now finally I've stopped the sparge, the theoretical sparge. I'm draining the mash tun. You can hear the one pump running. This is all going to direct it to the boil kettle. Both the STC 1000s are off. I've still got one pump running, obviously, with the light there. And uh, it's going into the bottom of the kettle and filling up. Now, what I what I can do now is uh, I'll switch on my. You have to see behind here. I'll need to plug it. Oh no, it's actually plugged in. My. Uh, Just blew the fuse, didn't I? Okay.